Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime, the podcast for kids and their pop culture-loving grown-ups. And this is an inspiring story about a hidden hero of history. It's a beautiful day for a story, adventure and glory, new friends and old ones too. It's an excellent day to get swept away in a tale, so let us regale you. Nothing like a relaxing day in Glitter Cove. One of the most spectacular beaches on the typographic islands. You said it. I hope we didn't forget anything. Well, let's see. Uh, We both have our sun hats. Of course we do, Jonathan. I never go anywhere without looking the part. Naturally. I've got the sun hat and the stylish striped swimsuit. I think the blue complements my quills nicely. Hmm, I agree. Oh, shucks. Now, back to the list. Uh, You've got the sunscreen. I've got the sunscreen. Uh, Books and magazines. Of course, I'd never forget the books. Beach towels. Got them. Snacks. Snacks. Ah, I put those right uh, in this... uh... Uh Uh-oh. Jonathan... Please tell me you didn't forget the snacks. I, uh, <laughs> uh seem to, uh, have forgotten the snacks. You, 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 what? No snacks? Oh, now, Reg, it's going to be okay. What am I going to do? Huh. To snack or not to snack? That isn't even a question. We must always snack. Well, we can just... uh, Alas, poor snackies. I knew them well. My greatest loves. My greatest joys. Imagining a day without them, oh, I cannot. (laughs) Oh, don't worry, buddy. Hey, look. There's a place where you can buy food over there on the pier. The sign says, Donna and Greta's So Fish Decated Seaside Snacks. We can just get something from there. (laughs) Oh, wonderful. Well, what are you waiting for, then? Oh, my goodness. Well, if it isn't Reggie the Hedgie. Oh, hello, Greta. Hi, Greta. Oh, and hello, Johnny. Welcome to Sophisticated Seaside Snacks. Oh, it's good to see you here. I didn't know you opened a little snack booth on the Glitter Cove Pier. And what a great setup. You can just swim straight to the cash register and help your customers. That's right. Since dolphins can't walk on land, Donna and I had to find a way to keep an eye on the business. We're very creative. And sensational. Or maybe a sand-sational? <laughs> I get it, because we're on the beach. Oh, Greta, you're shellarious. <laughs> oh, Reggie, that's a good one. Anywho, feel free to peruse our stock. We've got lots of delicious bites to choose from. Oh, don't mind if I do. Let's see here. Uh, we've got Shrimply, the best bag of chips. Do you like the picture of the seagull on the bag? I do. Oh, is that... Shrimp the seagull? Ha, it is! He had a hand in coming up with the perfect flavorings for those chips and agreed to be part of the brand. Oh, let's see. There's barbecue, sea salt and vinegar, and anchovy. Those are his favorite. Delightful! I'll be taking five bags. And uh, what do we have here? Crabulous crackers and cheese. Ha, that's great. We'll take five of those as well. And here is... Sophisticated seaweed? Ah, yes, our most popular snack. Seaweed? Oh, interesting. I didn't know landlubbers like us could eat seaweed. Absolutely you can. There's lots of edible seaweed out there. Hmm, you know, I'll be taking five of those as well. 
I've got to try it. You got it, Reggie. Actually, this reminds me of someone I learned about from my world. She is an expert in the ways of seaweed and marine algae. She already sounds fabulous. I, for one, would love to hear more. Uh, while I snack, of course. Well then, allow me to introduce you to a hidden hero of history. The First Lady of Limu, Isabella Iona Abbott. Limu? That's the Hawaiian word for water plants, and specifically refers to over 70 species of edible seaweed. Uh, I love it! Ms. Abbott was the leading expert on marine algae and seaweeds of the Pacific Ocean. This passion began when she was born in Hawaii on June 20, 1919. Her mom taught her about Hawaii's native plants, including many different kinds of edible Hawaiian seaweeds. Now, when you say native plants, that means that her mom was teaching her about the plants that naturally grow in a certain region. So, this is like the folktale forest's rambleberry plant? I don't think I've heard of that. If you ate a berry from its branches, you wouldn't be able to stop talking about it. Oh my. Well, yes, that definitely sounds like a plant that's native to our magical folktale forest. Ah, got it. In 1950, Ms. Abbott pursued and eventually graduated with a PhD in botany from the University of California, Berkeley. PhD? You know, a purple-headed dolphin. Ah, yes, that's got to be it. Um, not quite. Wait, is that an actual dolphin species? <laughs> yes. Well, no. I thought you were talking about my friend Tina, who got purple barnacles stuck to a head once. Oh, ouch. Actually, a PhD is the highest degree you can earn in school. It's a lot of hard work, and Ms. Abbott achieved it. Her degree was in the scientific study of plants or botany. Ms. Abbott was the first Hawaiian woman to receive a PhD in science. Unfortunately, at the time she graduated, it was difficult for a woman to get a teaching job at a university. Well, that just makes me crabby. Me too, Greta, me too. Ms. Abbott spent her time after finishing school diving deep into her studies of algae on the California coast. She even came up with recipes for pickling seaweed, baking it into cake, and more. Mm-mm, I love cake. Reggie, are you so serious right now? Greta, I am always serious about cake. Well, I love cake too. What a coincidence. Well, actually, I think a lot of people love... You know what? I'm going to let you have this one. Ms. Abbott hoped to reintroduce seaweeds into everyday life. She wanted to reconnect people to the natural world. One of the things she taught in her lifetime was how to use the plants that are all around us for food and other important purposes. Another amazing part of her legacy is that she brought awareness to culturally important plants. Like me telling you about our rambleberry. Absolutely, Reg. She learned and taught about historical uses for seaweed and marine algae. And one of my favorite things about her story is that Ms. Abbott relied on oral histories. She gave credit to older generations who were very important to her work in preserving Hawaiians' knowledge of the ocean. Oral histories? That's kind of like what you're doing now. Telling us the story of Ms. Abbott so more people can learn about her. That's right, Reg. Ms. Abbott's efforts led to the study of Hawaiian ocean knowledge at the university level, which was a big deal. And she promoted Hawaiian ocean stewardship practices when she was harvesting the limu, otherwise known as marine algae, which means she was making sure that she didn't hurt the ocean habitats when she was harvesting the seaweed and algae. Correct. She used knowledge from generations of Hawaiians to keep the oceans safe while still learning more about what they have to offer. I never thought about how the natural world around us becomes part of our culture and history. From the way we interact with plants to providing ingredients for our traditional foods. 
And then recipes are passed down through families, just like Ms. Abbott's cake. Oh, I adore this. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting a little verklempt. Are, are you okay, Greta? Oh, I'll be fine. Keep going. Don't worry about me. Continue the story. Uh, in her lifetime, Ms. Abbott is credited with discovering over 200 species of seaweed and marine algae. There are even several named after her, like red algae called Abatella. 200? Ugh, I don't know that many species of seaweed and algae. And I live in the ocean. Hard to compete with Ms. Abbott. She is regarded as the world's leading expert on algae in the Pacific Ocean. What a stand-up gal. Agreed. In 1966, Ms. Abbott became a research associate and guest lecturer. And eventually, in 1972, Stanford University made her a full professor of biology. She was the first woman and first person of color in this position at the university. Huzzah! In 1982, Ms. Abbott and her husband moved back to Hawaii. Once there, the University of Hawaii hired her to teach ethnobotany. And uh, what's that, Johnny? The study of the interaction between humans and plants. Hey, that's right, Reg. Great job. Why, thank you. I've been learning a thing or two, or three from you. <laughs> and it sounds like I could learn even more from Ms. Abbott herself. She truly wrote the book on seaweeds and marine algae. You got that right. Our resident expert. Yes, but also, she really did write the book. She wrote eight books to be exact, and over 150 academic articles and papers on the topic. Oh, that's just fabulous. Donna and I are distinguished authors ourselves. Really? Have you ever heard of Treasure Island? Wait, you wrote the Ten Book and Counting action-adventure series that starts with the classic novel, The Coast is Clear? Of course I have! Ah, so uh, a different Treasure Island than the one I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you read our series, Reggie. <laughs> And needless to say, I'm feeling quite inspired by Ms. Abbott today. Ms. Abbott has inspired so many others like you. She received many honors and awards in her field, and the University of Hawaii even established a scholarship in her name. It supports students studying Hawaiian ethnobotany and marine botany. Her work lives on. Indeed. Oh, what an absolute delight, Reggie and Johnny. Thank you for letting me share Ms. Abbott's story. Mm hmm. Mm. And, uh, mm. and these seaweed snacks. Uh, ah, mm. Mm. These are top tier snacks. Oh, how fab. I'm so glad you like them. Oh, let me try one of those. Ah, mm, mm. Oh, oh, you're right, Reg. Mm. Maybe we should just take a few more of these for the road. I couldn't agree more. Maybe Donna and I've got to learn how to make Ms. Abbott's cake. Ooh, that's an absolute must. If it's anything like these snacks, you'll have another hit on your hands. <laughs> we love a hit. <laughs> you two enjoy now. Toodles. Thanks, Greta. See you, Greta. <sighs> My life is now complete. Good stories. Good friends. And most fantastic of all, a beautiful sunny day in Glitter Cove? Mm, that is good. Uh, but no, the relaxing sounds of the waves? Mm, also delightful, but no. Hmm, well, what's the most fantastic of all then? Snacks! <laughs> of course, Reg, of course. Hidden Heroes of History is a John in Character production. This story was written by Molly Murphy and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Sound Studios. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalesstorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalesstorytime.com. 
Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time. So gather your squad for all to see It's a universe that we've imagined There's twists and turns and lessons learned This is where the unexpected happens Join our humble hosts and hit the trails Of the wonderful, wacky, wild world of dork tales